Hey guys, and welcome back to another makeup artist vlog. This vlog is not going to be as busy as the last couple of weeks. I think I'm finally getting to a point where I'm kind of starting to slow down a little bit, not like in a bad way, but to the fact that I can actually breathe again. I woke up this morning. I took the time to clean the brushes that have been sitting by my sink since Monday. I do have a therapy session at 9.30. I do therapy through BetterHelp. I have been super stressed and my headspace just hasn't been right. I've been getting like constant migraines all the time because of stress. And I just don't think obviously that's healthy. It's also reflected upon my business. It's just made me feel like I can't interact with my clients the same way. I've been not handling situations the best either. And ever since I've been doing therapy and been able to talk to her about things, I have like 100% felt on top of my game. I'm doing therapy at 930. And then I actually have a model call. I do just want to put on some eye gels because I think my under eyes need a lot of help here. So these are the dermatology brightening eye masks that I have. I wanted to explain what a model call was for those of you that have never heard of it before. So model calls are basically where you reach out to either people that you don't know or friends and family and you'll do makeup on them completely free of charge. The tricky thing in this industry is that when you first start out as a makeup artist, you're going to have zero things to post in your portfolio and people are not going to trust somebody who doesn't have work to show for it because people want to know what they're investing their money in. It's a really great way of building up your portfolio when you first begin as a makeup artist and now you have work to show for yourself so then actual paying clients will trust you a little bit more to hire you. The other reason why you would do model calls is for the same reason that I do. The one, if I'm trying out new products in my kit or something and I don't want to try them out on paying clients first, then the second reason I do it is just to get practice in different techniques or I guess skills that I want to improve on. I'm trying to perfect more of like the snatched like Instagram smoky effect wing liner kind of look. And it's a really, really popular look my brides have asked for recently. So I just wanted to make sure that I could 100% perfect the look. That's what I'm doing today. I'm sorry this video has been like really rambly so far, but I promise you that we'll actually get into like the makeup applications. And I'm gonna try to film um, the whole entire process of like me doing the makeup on her. I'm not gonna make it into a separate tutorial because tutorials on my channel alone haven't done very well. So I'm just gonna film it for like this actual vlog. I keep getting notifications on my phone because I need to log in in like four minutes to my therapy session. <laughs> so yeah, I need to get these eye gels off my eyes. Otherwise I'm gonna look real crazy. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys later when I'm setting up for my model call. Okay guys, it is model call time. I have all my candles in my house lit. I have this one right here. And then I'm about to play some music on Spotify there. Man, I feel like my room looks like such a mess. I don't know why. So I gotta go ahead and set up my stuff and get on shoes because I do not have that on right now. Okay, my client just texted me about five minutes ago and said she was on her way. Just to give you a little overview, this is what the station setup looks like. Most of my organizational sort of things I get off of Amazon. Like this is the Relevel backpack. Everything's linked in my Amazon storefront in each one of the descriptions of my videos. Uh, I have all of these organizational containers inside of here, mostly from Amazon as well. These two right here, people can't get anymore, which is like really upsetting. This big one and then this one came out of a five piece bathroom set, but unfortunately Amazon's been sold out of them like forever. Don't know when they'll restock or if they will. These three right here are little cups that are actually pencil holders from Amazon. Um, these two bins are from the Artist Kit Company. All of these white palettes are from Artist Kit Company too. And then I just depotted my own shadows and repressed them. Um, all of these like small containers, these ones right here are also from Amazon. All the little uh, airless pump jars are also from Amazon. This little thing is actually a brush canister from Makeup Forever. It's called the Danny's Pouch. I just use a dog poo bag, put it in one side and convert it into a trash can just so everything's like not sitting on my station. This palette is full of Huda Beauty and also the NARS blushes. So I have all of those repressed in this container. And then this is the Dior backstage palette that everybody's been raving about. So worth it, by the way, mine's broken, but still works. Uh, Natasha Nona Glam palette, Patrick Ta Major Dimension, the first one. Then I also have the Makeup by Mario Master Mats palette here that I just got and I love. Artist Kit Company Clear Acrylic palette. This spatula came off of Amazon. Amazon, Tarte Lash Applicator, Kiss Lash Glue, and then these are the Ardell. 420 naked lashes that I'm gonna be putting on my client. I'm doing more of that elongated fox eye, I guess Instagram sort of makeup look with like the wing liner effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these in half and then stack the ends on top of these and just add them to the outer corner so I have more of that pulled back like wing sort of liner look and then nothing is touching the corner of the eye so it won't irritate, which is kind of nice. Um, this bag is from my Kitco. I got it off of Camera Ready Cosmetics. 
Oh, and then this is also something I got from Amazon too. This is a King Camp chair. It supports about 300 pounds made out of aluminum. So it's fairly lightweight to carry around. Still kind of bulky, but it does the job. King Camp discontinued this specific chair. So I have one linked in my Amazon storefront that they make that's very similar and I'm sure replaced it. That is pretty much it. And hopefully I'll get some good footage for you guys. <laughs> Like the day before You're like a stone on my pillow I don't make a sound when I shut the door your favorite music gone all the way baritone oh, yeah. shut the lights go in front of my model call. It went really well. I just have a whole mess of stuff to clean up now, <laughs> but my husband and I are going to take our dogs on a walk really quickly before it starts raining, I think. Yeah, pretty much about it. So I will go ahead and talk to you guys probably tomorrow Um, because I'll have to prep like touch-up kits for my wedding on Saturday. <laughs> back home now. I think I'm probably going to finally film my freaking freelance makeup kit video for this year because I need to get on that. I think it'll probably be up by the time that you're seeing this video. So if you guys haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. Just to update you guys, if you guys saw my last vlog, I tried that Falscara, the DIY lash extensions. It's the whole entire kit that you get from the Kiss brand. I'm the worst sleeper in the world. I toss and turn. And so whenever I woke up in the morning every single day, they were like stuck to my eyelids because I'm a face sleeper. And I also hate the fact that I can't rub my eyes all the way either. So I usually only have them on for like probably like a few days or so. I realized that you really only have to use the actual bond and sealer and also the overnighter, but you can actually use any sort of lashes you want for that. It doesn't have to be specifically like the Falscara brand lashes. I used these guys. They're actually from Timu. I did like a Timu haul a couple of videos ago. Timu is basically a site where you can get things at wholesale prices, kind of like Alibaba or, or AliExpress. It's similar to that kind of website. So these are what the lashes look like. These are the ones I have on my eyes right now. So I cut them in individual little sections and then glued them up underneath my lashes like you're supposed to and use the bond and the sealer from the Falscara set and like they worked absolutely the same. 
I'm just saying. So yeah, let's do the wedding prep for tomorrow before I forget. Okay, as far as the touch-up kits go, I have six ladies to do for tomorrow. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna put a seventh one in there just in case. I always like to have one extra. I finally found individual lash glue pods and I got them from Family Dollar. I'm so freaking excited, guys. Like you have no idea how long I've been looking for things like this. So this is all the stuff that I pretty much have for the touch-up kits. And then I also include business cards too. So I get these oil blotting sheets off of Amazon. I'll usually include a couple of these for each of the touch-up kits and then put a business card on there. I'll stick this inside. Then I was labeling people's names on the outside of the kits, but recently I've kind of just generally been throwing them in there. Not like I've been like any more lazy, but I just don't know if it actually matters in the grand scheme of things. Um, so then I put makeup remover wipe, uh, mints that are from Amazon as well. These are little tiny um, lipstick applicators that I got off of Amazon. So I'll put that in there for people's lipstick. And that way everybody just has like an applicator and I don't have to include separate ones. And then um, this is the little lash glue because this will be the bride's touch up kit. Put a couple of Q-tips in here because you never know what you'll need that for. And this is actually going to be a powder jar for the bride. I'm gonna label it powder with a Sharpie. Then I'm gonna put some loose powder inside of here. Not a ton, just enough to fill up the bottom. And I'm not even sure if everybody uses these, but it's just like a nice gesture. And then that is what I include for my bride. And then for the rest of them, I pretty much include everything except for the lash glue and the loose powder. Hey guys, so I'm in the process of doing my makeup to film my freelance makeup kit video. Totally forgot that I had an appointment like before the wedding tomorrow, so I do actually need to wake up earlier. My first appointment is at eight o'clock and the person is coming to me and I left like an hour for myself, even though that person is probably only going to take like 45 minutes or so, but I just wanted to leave like extra room. And I was gonna show up at the wedding at 9.30 tomorrow, but then I realized that um, the wedding location is actually like 50 minutes away, like five zero. Uh, yeah, that's something that I've thought of for tomorrow. Um, and then the other thing is though, I just got a text message from a person that was also attending a wedding tomorrow and they reached out and goes, hey, I really need somebody to do my hair and makeup. I'm not from Indiana, so I need help finding somebody. And I guess I kind of just want to vent for a minute because like why in the world is beauty services an afterthought? You obviously knew you were attending this wedding like probably about like, three or four months ago. So it's like, why did you not think about just hiring somebody then? Like, I don't think that people truly realize like how far out we book up and we all don't just sit around and like wait for clients to message us at the very last minute. And especially if it's on a Saturday, like we've had weddings booked out like so far in advance. I just decided to email the client for tomorrow and just see if she can possibly meet me at 7.30 instead of eight because that would make me feel like a lot better about my life. And hopefully she sees it and then gets back to me. And yeah, it's totally my fault for like not looking ahead of time. I also have a feeling that those that are reaching out to me for makeup at the last minute are in panic slash scramble mode at this point in time. So they've probably already reached out to like six different makeup artists at that point and everybody said no. And they're just asking for referrals for like other people. In my mind, those are not my ideal clients because my ideal clients are people that specifically want me to do their makeup, you know? And also I have a feeling those people also like don't wanna pay my prices either. I also want you guys to keep in mind that you guys don't always have to say yes to jobs. Like there's always this whole like pressure I think to you know, hustle, get as many clients as you possibly can and take every single job, fit it in. But guys, it's stressful. Like it's so stressful to try to make people happy and like appease people all the time. And that's what leads to burnout. So if you guys wanna say no, say no. If you're not vibing with that person, the conversation's not going the way that you want it to. If they ask you to do really weird things that you're not comfortable with, or it seems like a very stressful situation, just say no. Like you're not gonna lose out on that job. That client was not meant to be your client. You will get other clients that actually respect you and your time. That's what I wanna end with. So. So I'm gonna go ahead and end off today because I really want to film my kit video. I need to finish putting on my makeup and then I will talk to you guys tomorrow morning. Is there a reason that my dogs insist on waking me up at 5.30 every morning? Update on what's been happening. So I got a hold of the person that's supposed to be coming today for me to do their makeup for the wedding that they're attending later. And um, they said that they could come at 7.30. I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. <laughs> and I have her touch-up kit assembled here. Um, I decided as a thank you for making the adjustment at the last minute to include like a lash glue for her and also loose powder. So I pretty much gave her the same thing that I would give brides. That's about it. So I'll talk to you guys when I'm dressed and ready to go and setting up for the appointment. I 
I just got done with my appointment and I had to clean up all my stuff really quickly, pack up all my shit and leave. She was definitely a talker, which I absolutely love because I love when people talk to me, but it does like distract me a little bit and it definitely took like longer than usual. Um, so I'm really glad that I had her meet me at 7.30. I'm hoping that this bridal party is like very, very chill. And I'm thinking it probably will be because the bride herself is kind of chill. I always feel like brides are like an indication of how picky or chill that the bridal party is going to be. The biggest tip though, when you guys are planning out timelines for your brides, make sure that you let your clients know though, like how long you need for each person. And I would overshoot it as opposed to undershoot it because if you get done early, then that's great. Um, but if you get done later, then you get kind of rushed and everybody else gets kind of anxious. I usually spend about like 40 minutes on average with each person and then five minutes is cleanup time in between. So make sure you also account for cleanup time when you give when you give people the timing for the application fees too. So like say you need a full 45 minutes to like do the makeup applications and that's what you know that you need every single time. I would say like 50 minutes per person or like do an hour per person or something just to make sure you have enough time. Honestly, like I would love to have an hour with each bride, especially some of them that have like more dramatic looks.
so chill and just kind of let me do whatever I wanted. I'm honestly really thrilled with it. I actually really like the way the mom's makeup came out at the very end. It was like more of a cool tone like smoky eye sort of look and she just really wanted like black liner and the whole entire thing. I am just headed home. I have about 41 minutes until I get home. It is like the perfect day. It's really sunny and it's 81 degrees right now. I will talk to you guys when I get home and when I'm cleaning up after the wedding. Okay, I had to grab food on the way home because I was starving. I had to get gas too. Got a burrito bowl. I got some chips because I usually just dip it, but yum. Like, look at how freaking good that looks. I'm about to chow down because like I have not eaten all today and it's 3.15. Okay, I'm done eating. I feel so much better. And now it's time for the kit cleaning. I think I'm just gonna overlay some music like I usually do and go ahead and clean my kit. There's tons of videos on my channel about like sanitation and also what I do specifically to kit clean. So if you guys wanna check that out, check out my makeup artist kit playlist up top here. Okay, I actually just took my dogs on a walk with my husband. We got time to just hang out and chat. We also went to dinner too. Um, so now I'm back home, but I did finish up cleaning my kit before I left. I just wanted to make an outro for today at least. I'm still gonna be filming tomorrow, so don't click out. I do have a bridal preview tomorrow. Hopefully it all goes well. And then I just am going to my mom's lake house afterwards. The lake house at least that she like permanently lives in because she retired and moved there. That's pretty much about it. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.
Good morning, guys. It's like 6.30 in the morning. I am just cleaning off my face because my face feels like really greasy. The hotter it's been, the more oily it's been. I recently got this headband set from Timu. It comes with this headband now, which is really nice and plushy. And then it also comes with wristbands too. So you can wash your face without it dripping down your arms, which I find very essential. And then I'm just going in with the CeraVe Hydrating Foaming Cleanser. Okay, now I have a whole bunch of brushes to clean. I usually do about 80% Dawn dish soap and 20% olive oil. The proportions do not have to be that exact. Now I gotta go back in the bathroom. And then I'm taking one of these drying racks. It's from Timu. I'll take a couple of tissues, put them on the bottom because I usually have my brushes dry with the bristles facing down and they dry a little bit quicker that way. the brushes are here. I had to use two of the racks and then I just set up all the face brushes on the back just because the face brushes are a little bit too big to fit in these little slots. Also just a reminder, um, spot cleaning with like a Cinema Secrets brush cleaner is not the only thing that you should be doing to clean your brushes. Like that only gets it like 99% clean. You should be deep cleaning it every single time and you also should be bringing enough sets of brushes for the amount of people that you have so you can save on cleaning time but then it's also more hygienic that way too since actual spot cleaning doesn't get it like all the way clean. The only way you should be using spot cleaner on site is if you want to use the same brush on the same person for a different purpose and that's the only way you should be using the spot cleaner and yeah i'm just gonna continue this um and then i'll talk to you guys after i'm done my dogs are so bored look at them so cute <laughs> then i also did get dressed as well i still have on my headband though because i still have to do makeup but i have on this little pineapple shirt and then i have on some jeans it's supposed to be kind of hot today so that's why i wanted to dress for the occasion i just made myself some lemon lime seltzer water and then also some strawberries inside of it and i'm going to start getting myself ready i just am going to do face makeup as i usually do and not eye makeup or anything Okay, it's about five till. Hopefully my client shows up here pretty soon. This is my station setup I have currently. Got my chair up over there, got the candle lit over here. Just an update, it hit nine o'clock and I was like, you know what, I better check my email just to make sure she's coming. She's still coming, but she did email me and say she was running a little bit late and she did apologize for it, which I appreciate. But this is making me nervous because depending on when she gets here now, I don't know if I'm gonna have like the full consultation time because she's doing this before I think a bridal shower that she's having. Um, So I hope that I don't get rushed. We'll see if I have enough time for this hopefully it goes well okay i just got done with the bridal preview and everything went really well we even got done on time for when she needed to be to her bridal shower everything ended up turning out i'll insert some pictures of what i did on her to the side here um, i'm just heading out to my mom's lake house after this i changed into shorts because it's like 74 degrees right now i will go ahead and just end off this vlog here if you guys did enjoy it definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up as well as also subscribing down to my channel if you guys do really like makeup artist content and as always i hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and i will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.